Welcome back everybody. Today we're doing one of those videos that I don't want to do and I hope to never do again but feel compelled to do so. So uh, today what we're going to go over is what is probably about to happen in Virginia. Hopefully some ways to mitigate that and uh, preserve liberty for folks that live in that state. So I want to point out that uh, just before we jump into the actual details of the unconstitutional tyranny uh, that is being proposed in Virginia is that uh, it's very easy for folks to say, um, oh, it stinks to be in Virginia, you should just move, those sorts of things. However, one thing uh, that we've seen over history around the world and here in America is that slowly uh, tyranny comes and spreads to places where you would not expect it. It's like a cancer and uh, once it gets its little pause in, um, it tends to uh, continue to grow and continue to grow until sort of a breaking point is reached. So that's why, again, I'm doing this video. So hopefully we don't reach that breaking point. Um, but in Virginia, what is going on right now? Well, they just had an election and uh, they had a Democrat majority takeover, uh, both in the legislative branch and then now in the executive branch as well. And uh, basically, if they vote together, there's essentially no way to stop uh, what is being proposed in terms of forcible gun seizures uh, from law-abiding citizens in Virginia. So governor, the governor uh, yesterday, as of recording this anyway, stated that uh, they are going to reintroduce uh, eight bills that were introduced earlier in the year, and uh, we're gonna walk through it. Um, but however, like I wanted to emphasize, there's no way to stop it right now if they vote in unison. Um, and that's, that's horrible to think about. So I have uh, notes here, so we're just gonna go by it. Uh, so the first one is legislation that requires background checks on all firearm sales and transactions. Um, essentially, it, it mandates that you have a registry. So uh, you can't do any private sales, you can't inherit guns. So if you're, you know, your father or your grandfather passes away, you can't inherit those guns um, without going through a background check at an FFL, again, creating a de facto registry. Um, no one can has ever rather explained to me how uh, creating a registry does anything besides create a hit list for gun confiscation legislation that, of course, these folks would like to uh, pass as well, which we'll get to here in just a second. Um, so that's the first part. The second part is legislation that, and I'm quoting here, this is not my language, uh, bans dangerous weapons. This will include bans on assault weapons, high capacity magazines, bump stocks, and silencers. So. Uh, dangerous weapons, all, all weapons are dangerous. Um, that's why we own them because they had the ability uh, to in, impart lethal force on um, animals, threats to our family, uh, threats to our liberty, etc. That's why we own them. That's why our founders wanted us to own them. Uh, that's not by mistake. It's not an error in the constitution. Um, that's what it is. However, uh, again, going through each one, the assault weapons. So they will define that here in just a second. And we'll get to that because uh, there is actual no definition for an assault rifle, um, but Virginia wants to make one in their state. Uh, it will ban high capacity magazines. They state that high capacity magazines are magazines of 10 rounds or more. Um, that's absolutely not high capacity for a given gun, there is a standard capacity of the magazine. So for instance, a Glock 17, um, the standard capacity is 17 rounds. For a Glock 18, the standard capacity is 33 rounds. Uh, an AR-15, the standard capacity varies widely uh, depending on what the manufacturer ships with it. Um, so it's definitely not 10 rounds, though that's for sure. It's an arbitrary number that does nothing to keep anyone safe and just turns law-abiding citizens who own standard capacity magazines into felons overnight. And uh, that's in my opinion, one of the things that they are absolutely looking to do. Bans bump stocks. Currently right now, bump stocks are illegal federally, uh, so that really doesn't do anything. However, bump stocks are not a danger to the public. And in fact, anyone who kind of understands how firearms works uh, and you know basic infantry tactics knows that a bump stock is probably decreasing the lethality of a weapon rather than increasing it. Uh, it also bans silencers. So um, just kind of a, an interesting analogy here is silencers don't act, for those who don't know who are new here who are watching, silencers don't actually make guns silent like they do in the movies. Uh, they just reduce the decibel level um, to something that potentially may not damage your hearing, or at least it won't damage it as much as it would if you were to fire the firearm unsuppressed. Um, basic kind of argument that I, I think here. Um, number one, you know, for those who believe that you know, it's a woman's body, it's a woman's choice. So I would say, okay, if that's what you believe, in this case, you should absolutely support silencers because women, of course, are a large majority of gun owners. Um, they 
also. It's their body, their hearing. Um, they should have the choice to protect it if they want to with a silencer. Um, that's just basic logic 101. If you believe one, you should probably believe the other. Um, just throwing that out there. Uh, legislation to reinstate Virginia's successful law. Uh, that's again, their language, uh, limiting one handgun purchase per month. Um, tell me how this reduces crime in any way and tell me how any criminal out there who's intent on doing violence, whether it be a street criminal um, or a mass murderer, would be in any way prohibited or restricted or uh, less capable of carrying out their evil deeds by only being able to purchase one firearm a month. Yeah, I'll keep waiting. All right, next, next point here. Legislation that requires lost and stolen firearms to be reported to law enforcement within 24 hours. So let's say you go on vacation and you're out of town for more than a week. Someone breaks in on day one and steals your firearms that you possess legally as a law abiding citizen and you have them in your home and they go out there and you know steal them and then commit a crime with them police find them it's like say day three so you're still out on vacation you're from virginia let's say it's the winter and you're hanging out in florida on the beach it's nice it's sunny and then all of a sudden armed men with guns from the government show up because you are now a felon and they're going to take you away and imprison you that is what this legislation would, would do so there's that again once again it does nothing for criminals intent on doing harm. Next one would be legislation creating an, again, their words, an extreme risk protection order allowing law enforcement and the courts to temporarily separate a person from their firearms if the person exhibits dangerous behavior or pre presents an immediate threat to self or others. So um, some people call these red flag laws, I call them due process um, removal laws because that's what it is. Um, everyone in America has the right to be heard um, before the courts whenever there's any legal action being enforced or applied to them. And uh, this would, of course, violate the Fourth Amendment and probably other amendments as well. Second Amendment, of course, uh, there. And again, there's more amendments to it than just that. Um, and it is completely unconstitutional and tyrannical in every way. And again, I've not heard of a single instance where these laws have been applied, that it saved anyone's life. And in fact, I know of one case where a person uh, had this law applied to them and their house was broken into uh, before they were able to get their firearms back. So that is a very real and present danger that has actually happened in real life. Um, and of course, none of these laws have ever saved anyone. And it allows a very slippery slope where someone can just make an allegation against you, anyone, because this particular piece of legislation doesn't say that it's a family member or anyone in harm or in fear, uh, potentially in fear of you. It can be literally someone that you just saw at the grocery store that you just make a claim against. And again, armed men from the government will come up and forcibly seize, seize their property. Um, is that really something you guys want in Virginia? I would probably say no. Uh, legislation prohibiting individuals subject to final protective orders from possessing firearms. The bill expands the Virginia law currently prohibits uh, individuals subject to final protective orders of family abuse to protecting firearms. So once again, if they already have the process in place and it's something that people are happy with, why are they going to expand it? It's just, again, it's not going to impact criminals, violent people, terrorists, mass killers, etc. It has no effect on them. It's just adding to the list of people who are law abiding that they can make into criminals overnight. Uh, another piece of legislation would enhance their word, the punishment for allowing access to a loaded unsecured firearm by a child from a class three misdemeanor, which is what it currently is in Virginia, to a felony. The bill also raises the age of a child from 14 to 18. So once again, uh, you have a, a gun stored in your house. You have a super responsible 16 year old child at home that has never shown any kind of sign of uh, doing anything wrong. In fact, typically, let's just say they watch your four other children act as a de facto parent when you're gone because you're a single mom, you're at work all day to provide for your family and your children, and you want them to have the ability to protect themselves in your absence because you're working hard to create a better life for them. And you leave a firearm that your, your oldest child has access to in case she needs to, he or she needs to protect the lives of their siblings uh, when a violent man intent on raping all your kids and then killing them when they're done breaks in. Um, now, if you did that as a responsible parent, you're now a felon. 
that's what they want to do in Virginia. So all those hardworking single moms out there and many other circumstances that could fit this definition of what they are now trying to make into a felon felonious act, that's what they're trying to do. Lastly, and I'm sure they'll come up with many great ideas after this, legislation enabling localities to enact any firearms ordinances that are stricter than state law. This includes regulating firearms to municipal buildings, libraries, permanent events, etc. cetera. Um, in that piece of legislation, it defines the, um, the assault rifle as anything that takes a magazine of 10 or more rounds. So anything that is capable of taking a magazine of 10 or more rounds. Um, so just kind of look around all the firearms that are out there in Virginia, in many other states right now, that is the vast majority of firearms. That's probably, I would estimate, 80 to 90% of firearms that are out there. Um, those now become assault weapons. I should also mention that within two of these bills, it, there is no grandfather clause. There's no grandfather provision. So if you own them now, as soon as these laws um, go into place and you are a Virginia resident, if you don't surrender them over to men from the government with guns, um, then you, again, are immediately overnight turned into a felon. A felon. Law-abiding citizen simply wanting to protect their family from criminals, terrorists, authoritarian government. Now you are a felon. So what can we do about it? People who regularly watch this channel know that I'm not an attorney, I'm not a historian, I'm not someone who has any special um, insight into the legislative process in Virginia. However, I do pay attention and I do you know, inform myself before making these videos. I've done some research on this particular topic. And from what I gather, there's about three ways that this can be stopped. Um, however, the odds against it are, any of them are, are, are pretty high. Um, so the first way is to persuade, you know, quote unquote, reasonable uh, Democrats in this case, because that is the party that's trying to enact this type of oppression on the people in Virginia. Uh, Persuade some of them who may sort of be on the fence, may be in uh, sort of mixed districts, um, that these things are just horrible and unconstitutional. Not only that, but they deprive Virginia citizens of their natural rights as human beings uh, to defend themselves as they see fit. Um, so probably reaching out to those guys, kind of informing them of just how horrible these laws are and just how many people would be turned again into felons overnight if this legislation was to happen. Um, hopefully we could turn their vote and have them vote this down um, like it happened last year. However, again, the odds are much, much, uh, much lower that that'll happen this time. Um, the second way that these things could perhaps be stopped is through a court. Now, the problem with that is to stop it through a court, legislation has to be enacted. There has to be a case that takes time. And in the meantime, people are being oppressed. Um, so that's not good, right? Um, but it could happen. It could happen. Uh, on different levels, the, the, our judicial system is pretty complex and there's other folks who can explain that better than I can. The third way is, you know, the by last means that our founding fathers gave us the Second Amendment for in the first place. Um, obviously, that's not something I want to see. Um, but again, there was a reason that our founding fathers gave us the Second Amendment and it wasn't to hunt deer. Um, these laws, again, deprive us of our very basic human rights, our natural rights, our constitutionally given rights, our God-given right, whatever way you tend to view this, it's probably one of those four of our way to defend ourselves and our families. It's absolutely unacceptable for these laws to go into place. And anyone who lives in Virginia, I would definitely recommend that you do not comply with any of these laws in any way. It's absolutely insanity. Our, again, the people who fought and died for this country uh, to be established hundreds of years ago, the people who have fought and died in more recent wars to be able to give freedom to people in other countries, obviously they would do the same here um, to give us freedoms. Um, and this is just absolutely a slap in the face to every American who stood for freedom and who stood for liberty around the world since the inception of our country. Um, so definitely I urge everyone to get active, get involved. I'm not sure if there's any Facebook groups, Instagram groups, whatever the case may be that are working to stop this. If there's any lobbyist groups that are working to stop this, I would imagine Firearms Policy Coalition, Gun Owners of America, et cetera, are starting on this right now, but it's an uphill battle. And if people in Virginia don't get active, you're gonna find yourself subject or other subjects of your blackface, KKK uniform wearing uh, governor He's the modern equivalent of the king who's trying to oppress the colonists that we fought the war against. Well, 
He is that in 2019, trying to oppress all of you, turn all of you into criminals and subjects of him. So that's it, guys. It's a sombering video. It's a depressing video, but I want to get the word out because I think there are a lot of people out there who agree with some of the things I probably said in this video that don't know this is about to happen. And trust me, it's about to happen. If you do not get active in Virginia, this will happen. Don't say I didn't tell you. Don't say I didn't warn you. And for those of you guys outside of Virginia, they're coming for you. They're coming for you. It's everywhere. Nowhere is safe in America today. Nowhere is safe. That's it, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Look forward to seeing all of you in the next video. We also had gun control. The government said that children were playing with guns and we had hunting accidents, people accidentally shooting each other, and we had criminals again, murderers. The only way that they could track the murderer was by the um, serial number of the gun. So bring your, your gun to the police station, then we can register the serial number and we can track the criminal. And we thought that was a good idea. Mm -hmm. So gladly we did that. Not long afterwards, they said, no, it did not help. We could not track all the criminals. The best way to have no more crimes and no more people getting hurt, bring your guns to the police station and they already know who had guns because we registered our guns. Keep your guns and buy more guns and... <laughs> and stack up on, on your ammo. A gun is no good if you don't have any ammo. Dictatorship did not happen overnight. It took five years from 1938 until 1943, we had a full blown dictatorship. Had we kept our guns, we would have fought a bloody battle to the last men and women to keep our freedom. But we had no guns. A classic example is, in Switzerland, it is law that everybody has to have a gun. And Hitler took every country in Europe except Switzerland. And Switzerland did not have a war for more than 600 years. Hitler never tackled Switzerland. So keep your guns. Keep your guns.